Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of The Shaggy Man of Oz by Jack Snow and L. Frank Baum. Uh, I'm going to read you the blurb, I'm going to go through and check out my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. Um, let's get to it. Dane reads... The 38th novel in L. Frank Baum's Oz series is The Shaggy Man of Oz, 1949. The first and last by Jack Snow, which isn't true, as well as Frank Baum and his successors. Frank J. Kramer, that's weird, I don't understand... Okay, the first and last by Jack Snow, as well as Frank Baum and his successors. Uh, okay. Frank G. Kramer provided the illustrations. When the copyright on the book was not properly renewed, it became public domain in the US. I don't know if it's necessarily the case of it not being properly renewed. Stuff just automatically becomes public domain. Uh, anyway, we have this fantastic little page here that just says detailed historical context and then is blank. This appears to be the book that I uh, spilled coffee on at my mum's over Christmas. All right, chapter one, the twins look in. Well, straight away, I found it weird that there is a child called Twink. Um, if you know anything about gay culture, you may know that uh, Twink is the term for... Let's let Google define it so that I don't have to. Hey Google, what is a Twink? According to Wikipedia, twink is gay slang for a man who is usually in his late teens to twenties whose traits may include a slim to average physique, a youthful appearance, little or no body hair, flamboyancy, and general physical attractiveness. Twink is used both as a neutral descriptor, which can be compared with bear, and as a pejorative. Very nice. That was quite loud. I think my neighbours probably heard that and are wondering why I'm asking that. You're probably wondering why I know that. I'm a man of the world, I know things. Oh yeah, and then, so then Twink gets introduced to the shaggy man and it all gets a bit, you know. Um, but yeah, anyway, we get, wait a minute, interrupted the shaggy man. How did you happen to get a name like Twink? Twink and Tom are not our real names, explained Tom. Our parents named us Abadiah and Zebadiah. Why did they do that? Asked the shaggy man indignantly. Well, Tom went on, they didn't expect twins. We are twins, you know. And they couldn't make up their minds what to name us. So they just picked names at the beginning and end of the alphabet. That's how we came to be named from A to Z, or A to Z, but I assume it's an American author, so I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt there. Oh yeah, then um, the Shaggy Man saying, uh, he took the love magnet to the land of Oz. So now you've got the Shaggy Man, the Twink, and the love magnet. It sounds very wrong. But anyway, Conjo, the Conjury goes, my love magnet in the land of Oz. No, replied the Shaggy Man, not your love magnet, since you gave it away. It now belongs to all the people of the Land of Oz. That is why I'm here now. The love magnet has been broken. The favour I ask you is to repair it, since you, its creator, are the only person who can do that. And uh, that kind of leads us into the bulk of the plot of this, this novel, basically. All right, Twiffle, uh, at the start of Chapter 7, goes... Uh, he, tells the shag he tells the shaggy man, quick, get into your clothes and I will arouse the children. Uh, and Twink and Tom are wide-eyed with excitement. Uh, you can't read this without thinking bad things, you know? And um, there, there's an airmobile in this. They actually end up end up in the Lord, uh, talking to the Lord High Mayor of, like, High Town, was it called? Something like that? I can't remember what, what the town was called. Um, but the airmobile, it, uh, it attained so great a speed that it shot off into space beyond the power of gravity. Um, which I just thought was really interesting because again, this is relative. What, what, what did we say? 1949. So this is before, you know, even space travel became a concern. You know, it's way. It's like 10 years before Sputnik. So I just thought it was cool that it was, uh, you know, in the public public eye there. So they end up meeting uh, King Ticket and Queen Curtain, and um, basically they have like a theater theater thing going on. But people are kind of. Tor like, not tourists, like visitors to the realm or whatever, they end up becoming a, a permanent part of the theatre, whether they would like to or not. The King, King Ticket m says something musingly, which always bothers me, but uh, uh, he says, Anyway, the Land of Oz is vastly overrated. Why, as far as I know, there isn't a single theatre in all the country. And it turns out that the, so this place is the Valley of Romance, but even though, you know, they live in the Valley of Romance, they've been living without love, and, you know, it's one of those, one of those stories where love is all powerful and saves everything. All right, then as if all of these like weird names and whatnot <laughs> wasn't strange enough, then we get the king of the fairy beavers. Tom, who was especially fond of animals, longed to hold one of the little beavers and fondle it to his heart's content. Okay, so the beaver king gives them a cloak of visibility, which I think is quite a cool concept. A cloak of what? exclaimed the shaggy man. 
You have all heard and read tales of cloaks of invisibility, explained the Beaver King. Cloaks that make the wearer invisible are famous in the fairy tales of all lands. Well, I knew that we would become invisible today against our wishes, so I have attempted to create a cloak of visibility, a cloak that would overcome the spell of invisibility. All right, and then we do actually have a detailed historical context at the end, which I'm just going to read out to you, because this reads like the notes somebody would give to somebody to go off and write one of these, you know? Like, this is the brief. Anyway, The Shaggy Man of Oz, Detailed Historical Context. During the period this book was originally written, the world was a very different place. The events of the time produced an impact on the authorship, style, and content of this work. In order for you, the reader, to better appreciate and connect with this book, it is therefore important to have some context on world events during this time frame. To this end, we have included a detailed events calendar for the 20th century for your reference. Please give consideration in particular to the era around 1949, the year in which this work was first published. Disclaimer, some scenes throughout history may not be suitable for children, for example, in relation to war or violence, please use your own discretion before reading this section to your child or allowing your children to read it. The Spanish flu epidemic, World Wars 1 and 2, nuclear weapons, nuclear power and space exploration, nationalism, decolonization, the Cold War and post-Cold War conflicts, as well as scientific advancements, dominated the 20th century and helped to define the modern age. This concludes the historical context. That was it. Thank you for your interest in our publications. Please don't forget to check out our other books and leave a review if you enjoyed this book. Yeah, I mean, I particularly enjoyed the detailed historical context. I, you know, I learned so much from that. But yes, uh, The Shaggy Man of Oz by Jack Snow and L. Frank Baum, apparently, even though he was dead by this point. I gave it a pretty strong four out of five. It was, it was probably one of the better, not the best, but certainly one of the better um, Wizard of Oz books. Uh, especially the ones not written by L. Frank Baum. Um, my only sort of negative thing, and this isn't really about the book, is that after this point, I don't think any more of the books are in the public domain, so I haven't been able to find any more of the books, at least for less than like £100, $100, that kind of thing. Um, so I think I've come to the end of my Wizard of Oz reading adventure. Um, but yes, there we go, that's what, that's what I made of it. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Shaggy Man of Oz by Frank Snow and L. Frank Baum. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.